Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and a few months ago I bought my kids a pair of iPad 9.7s. Uh, these inexpensive iPads support the Apple Pencil, and I made the mistake of only buying one pencil for two kids, and I needed to rectify that, but I didn't want to spend top dollar uh, for another Apple Pencil, which can be quite expensive, so I went out in search of alternatives. And today we're going to do a buying guide about all the different pencil options that are out there. Uh, because you can save a lot of money provided you don't need all of the features that the more expensive Apple devices provide. So we're going to take a look at the Logitech Crayon, which we reviewed a few weeks ago. And we're going to also look at the Adenit Note, which is the least expensive device that makes use of Apple's digitizer technology, which I think is the best in the business. So we're going to compare all of these so you can make the right choice for your particular needs. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that both iPads I paid for with my own funds. I also bought the Logitech Crayon and these two Apple pencils with my own funds. But the Adenit Note here came in free of charge from Adenit. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what these different pencils do and what they cost. So let's begin with Apple's pencil offerings. There are two available at the moment because they've recently released a second generation pencil that will only work with the newest iPad Pros like I have here. Uh, so if you don't have a brand new iPad Pro, you'll need to look at the original first generation pencil. The second gen pencil here costs $129. I suspect that as new iPad models are released, Apple will be pushing people to the second generation pencil because it is nicer and actually feels nicer uh, than the first generation one I have here. Uh, the first gen pencil costs $99. Now the second gen pencil on the new iPad Pro will charge up just by attaching it to the side of the device here. It will lock in magnetically and then as you can see begin charging. It also allows you to tap on it to switch your uh, brushes here. So for example if I double tap the pencil I can get my eraser up and then double tap again to bring up the brush again. Uh, the other pencil for the other iPads uh, charges by plugging into the charging port on the iPad device and it does not have the tap to switch brush feature, but otherwise it will do very much the same thing you're about to see here. Now what has impressed me about Apple's pencil technology is the wrist detection. Even on the low cost devices, it is exceptional. And what that means is that when I go to write out a note here, it will not pick up my hand resting on the screen, but it will accurately pick up what the pencil is writing as I write. And that is something that feels just very natural on this platform and better than what I've seen on other tablet devices. But you'll note when I introduce the alternatives in a few minutes that the wrist detection works equally well on those low cost devices. Now a feature that is unique to the Apple Pencil and not on the alternatives is pressure detection. Let me show you how that works right now. Uh, so I've got a painting app here open called Procreate. And if I just lightly push my pen down here, you can see the kind of line that I get. But if I push down harder, you can see it gives me a much thicker line because there is a pressure sensitivity feature built into this pencil to detect how hard or how soft I'm using uh, the pencil against the screen. And that is unique to this device. So if you are an artist, uh, this is probably the only choice you have because the other options do not provide that pressure sensitivity. And I think that's going to be very important for people that are using apps like Procreate here to get the looks that they are hoping to get. Again, this is just not available on the other pencils. And the pressure sensitivity is also available on the original Apple Pencil. Uh, so you can get what you just saw on my iPad Pro with the iPad 9.7. And my daughter's been doing a lot of fun artwork uh, using that pressure sensitivity feature on the first gen Apple Pencil with her inexpensive iPad. And another interesting component of the Apple Pencil technology is the ability to detect an angled brush stroke. So as you can see here, as I draw with an angle, I get a very thick line. Uh, but if I draw a normal line here, it is thin. And I think there's some degree of variability here as well, depending on the angle as you draw. Uh, this is a feature that's available on both the second generation pencil and the first generation pencil. And the Logitech Crayon here can do the angles as well. And this is a good segue 
into what you can do and not do uh, with the alternative pencil devices. So we're going to take a look at the Adenit Note now along with the Logitech Crayon. The Adenit device is uh, $49, the least expensive of the ones we're going to be looking at today. Uh, the Logitech here will cost about $70. Now the Adenit pencil will only do the wrist detection uh, and the lines. It doesn't do angles or pressure. Uh, the Logitech pencil will do the lines and wrist detection and angles, but not pressure. Pressure is unique, again, to the Apple pencils. Let's take a look now and see how these perform. Now, one of the cool things about these lower cost Apple pencil alternatives is that they have broader compatibility. So if buying the $129 pencil for your new iPad Pro is not in your budget, uh, you can go with one of these alternatives and use them uh, with this device. And they will also work with the lower cost devices in Apple's product line, including the 9.7 here, as well as the iPad mini that now supports the pencils too. I'll put, again, down in the description, a full compatibility list so you can make sure you pair the right pencil uh, with the right iPad. And I think if your intention is only to take notes, uh, the Adenit uh, note here is probably the one to look at. Uh, you have an on-off switch here to turn it on and it will work pretty much as well or as nicely uh, as the original pencil does, as you can see. It does the wrist detection just fine. The latency feels almost identical to what I was experiencing with my official Apple Pencil second generation and all is good. What this doesn't do though is the pressure detection or the angle detection. So if I switch over here to the uh, paintbrush, you can see it's the same uh, thickness and, and darkness no matter what I do with the pencil here as I'm drawing. I can't do an angle either because it will give me the same line no matter which way I orient things. But if you're just taking notes, uh, this is probably fine. It's not going to be good for doing artwork and other things that require more precision. Uh, but again, for writing, it's going to be just as good as the more expensive Apple Pencil and deliver you a much lower price tag. What I also like about these alternatives is they have on-off switches too. Uh, one of my gripes with the Apple Pencil is that I don't use it all that often and every time I take it out, it's dead. Uh, so having the on-off switch here will give you a little bit more peace of mind for uh, getting everything going. Uh, the Adenit here will charge with a USB connector, a micro USB connector. You just plug it in like you would a phone and you're off and running with that one. Again, not a bad deal. Now the Logitech Crayon looks and feels a little bit more like a carpenter pencil. It might be easier for little kids to use. And just like the other ones here, it does very uh, good note taking here. It's got good wrist detection, no issues with this at all. The latency feels exactly the same as it does on the other devices. Uh, what's unique about this one though is that it does support the angles, so we can do our big thick line here and maybe vary it up a little bit as we're drawing. It feels pretty nice and close to the original Apple Pencil and you do have that option here which you don't have on the lower cost note. So I think this one might be well suited for a kid that wants to do a little bit of drawing and really doesn't need that pressure sensitivity just yet in that, in that stage of their artistic development. Uh, and of course you'll have some additional options here with the ability to draw those angles if you want. Uh, this one charges with the same charging cable that you use for your iPad. It uses the lightning connector, but not the USB-C connector that the newer pros have. So you can use your iPhone charger or your original iPad charger. Just plug that cable in there and you can charge it up. And like the Note, it's got an on-off switch as well, which is very convenient. The one thing I've noticed on the crayon here after using it for a couple of weeks is that sometimes the tip here will loosen up a little bit. You just want to make sure it stays tight uh, because if that tip is loose, it just doesn't seem to work at all. Uh, but once you tighten it up, you're good to go. Now, both of these also work very well on the original 9.7 inch iPad. And what's cool about the alternative pencils is that they just start working. You just take them out and start writing and there's no pairing or unpairing. It just works. Uh, right out of the gate here as you can see. And what's cool is that all of these pencil options uh, will work on things with screen protectors. So this uh, particular iPad uh, has this really rugged case here and the screen uh, protector is over the actual display yet all the things that we were doing on the iPad Pro here are working. So the angles work with the uh, crayon here and everything else seems to work including pressure sensitivity with the original pencil. Uh, likewise, I can switch my uh, note on here and get that one going just the same way and all is good. It's a pretty plug and play thing. Just turn them on, 
touch the screen and you are off and running. So what is the best pencil to use in your particular application? Well, I think if you are looking to do artwork, uh, then the official Apple offerings are probably the only option for you. And that is because these have the pressure sensitivity that the other two lack, but you will be paying a lot for these. Uh, again, that second generation pencil for the newer iPads is gonna run you $129. That's quite expensive, but if that pressure sensitivity is important for you, uh, this is without a question the best in the business right now, and you will definitely get your money's worth out of it. Just be prepared to pay that price. Uh, the first generation pencil has a lot of the same performance, uh, but that one, of course, is for iPads like this one and the others that uh, the second generation pencil does not work with. And again, check down below for all of the compatibility information. I like the crayon a lot for little kids who are looking for something that's a little bit easier to grab onto and don't need all that pressure sensitivity. It does the angles just fine. It's very easy to charge. I like the fact that you can turn it on and off. Uh, it's a very good option, I think, for people that don't mind the carpenter feel or, again, uh, something for a kid that uh, needs something a little bit larger to grab onto. But if you're a note taker, I found that this Adnet note here really does a passable job. It feels like a normal pen. It's about the size you would expect. It's metal. Um, it has a very similar feel to any ballpoint pen you've probably used over the years. Uh, very easy to get going and turn it on. Uh, the wrist detection works fine. The latency is fine on it. Everything just seems to work just great with this, this device, and it's going to cost you a lot less than the official Apple Pencil will cost you. Uh, if you're doing any kind of artwork, it's probably a non-option, but if you are a note taker like I am, this is probably all you need, and you can save yourself a lot of money by getting this to pair it up with your iPad Pro for taking those notes. It really works, I think, just as well for note taking as the more expensive Apple Pencil does, uh, yet you can buy a couple of them for what uh, one of those pencils might cost you there. So that's my recommendation if you are just a note taker. Uh, kids will really, I think, do well with the Logitech crayon here because of the angle sensitivity, but if you really need all the features that we talked about, the Apple Pencil is still probably the best choice, especially for artists. So it's good to have these choices out here, and I'm glad to see that there are some much more reasonably priced ones if you are just taking notes. Uh, let me know what you thought down in the comments below, and until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, emudev.org, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.